All right, class, let's get the second half started. Please welcome your period three teacher, Bluey Robinson. What up, we day? All right, all right. What's up, people? My name is Bluey Robinson. How are you feeling? You, you good so far? Yeah, love it. All right, now I'm going to be your teacher for period three, and I want good students, all right? I didn't get dressed up for nothing, all right? Now, um, our topic is social empowerment, and I want to start this with something we can probably all relate to. All right, so it's lunchtime, and you're heading out to the canteen. But the second you walk in, you realize there's no table waiting for you to join. You look around the room, searching for a friendly face in the crowd, a mate, someone you know. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't see anyone. And then you get that little feeling, you know, that little sensation starts up. Like, Where am I going to sit? I don't know anyone. You feel nervous, self-conscious, rejected. All right, so let's see a show of hands if you've ever felt that sort of exclusion before. I know I have. Yeah? Don't be shy. We're all here together. All right, now, um, when, I moved, when I was young, I moved from North London to a community that, let's say, didn't really understand Caribbean culture so much. Shout, shout, what's up? And um, all of a sudden, I kind of, I stood out, you know what I mean? I became a bit of a target. It's sad, but, um, you know, my hair and everything, I used to wear a hat to try and, you know, fit in or whatever. Kids would whisper, you know, chase me, try to pull my hat off, that kind of thing. And it, it, they thought it was funny, but, you know, it, sometimes it, those things kind of affect you, you know? And we all know what it feels like to be singled out. And while it's hard and unfair, for most of us, it doesn't really last that long. But for some people, it feels like a lifetime. For Liam Hackett, it wasn't one lunch or one term that he felt rejected. It was every single day for 10 years. It started when he was really young. Other boys noticed that he wasn't really into football that much. They started teasing him, calling him a girl, you know, like it's an insult, that like sort of thing. And he remembers two boys holding him against the wall when he was young, while a third kicked him between his legs over and over. And then he went to high school, and it got worse. From the first day, he was singled out as different. No one wanted to be his friend. They were afraid of being seen with him, lumped into the same category. They didn't want to be treated the same way. And he was alone. And eventually, that sort of feeling takes a toll on a person. You can start blaming yourself, start trying to change things about yourself. And it's, it's, it's not right. Liam, he decided to go online to try and find out how to become more masculine, you know? Had to fit in, had to start fancying girls and all the kind of stuff you, you think you're supposed to do, you know? Only that's not really how it works. It would be like waking up one day and just deciding you're going to be taller. It doesn't work like that. Trust me, I know. <laughs> Five foot nine of good luck. Right. <laughs> now, whether, whether you like girls or boys, how tall you are, where you come from, there are certain things we just can't change. And we shouldn't have to. I was singled out because of the way I looked, but there's nothing wrong with being black or gay or from another country for being too tall, being too short to anything. Yeah. For being into poetry, not into poetry enough. For not having a phone, not being on Facebook, or having spots. I really want you to hear this all loud and clear, that people picking on you for being different is all right. There's nothing wrong with you. Understand me when I say that. There's nothing wrong with you. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Now, uh, for Liam, even though he tried to change himself, things just got worse. The bullies got meaner and the attacks more violent. One day he was beaten so badly that he was sent to the hospital. And so eventually, something happened. After trying to change himself, to hide, to shrink, Liam found his voice. He didn't want to feel like a victim anymore. So he began posting his stories online, 
sharing his experiences. And to his surprise, he found out a lot of people who wanted to do the same. Ditch the Label was born, an online community enabling young people to connect and share. People who had been isolated and alone found that they were part of something bigger. People always say that bullying is just a part of growing up. But Liam knew that it doesn't have to be that way. It really doesn't. From a small community on MySpace, yeah, it was a while ago, um, <laughs> to a network of tens of thousands across the UK, Liam turned his experiences into a movement of young people helping each other. He empowered them to move, the lab move past the label and stereotypes, to accept themselves, and to help others find acceptance too. So why am I telling you all this? Well, for a few reasons, really. Bullying in school, wolf whistling, people on the street, abuse in the home, homophobia on the internet, these issues are everywhere. Nearly three million young people in the UK are bullied each year. But Liam's story taught us it doesn't have to be this way. And we, all of us, our community, we are the solution. And that's where social empowerment comes in. It's everything. From your after-school programs to local organizations like the Trussell Trust, Shelter, and Age UK, these sort of groups exist to create safe spaces and provide a sense of belonging for each of us. They empower people, turning victims into agents of change. Like many of you, <laughs> I'm running out of time here. <laughs> like many of you, I grew up in a single parent household. My mum raised me and my three sisters all by herself, and it couldn't have been easy for her. I was a pretty energetic kid, let's say, and um, I know the importance of having a supportive community. It can be the difference between standing here on this wee day stage, raising your hand in class, and feeling like your life has value. This is social empowerment. This is period three, and to start us on our journey, we're gonna hear from a world-class actor, ladies and gentlemen.